Hey guys, let's talk about some audio history. So if I were to ask you what the first audio recording ever, as far as we know, was, what would you have as an answer? What would you say? Go ahead and think about it for a second. I'll give you some time. Okay, so if you had an answer for that, I bet a bunch of you probably would guess something about Thomas Edison, setting the first recording ever made on his invention, the phonograph, which he invented in 1877. You might have seen videos about the first recording and playback on the phonograph, with people reciting Mary Had a Little Lamb and a very rough and by modern standards bad quality playback. But if that was your answer, what if I told you that you were wrong? That's not actually the first ever audio recording. As far as we know, that's the first time a device was created that could both record and play back audio recordings. However, just before that in 1877, an inventor named Charles Cross, and on a side note, I really apologize for my inevitable mispronunciation of things in this. There's a lot of French names in here and I do not speak French. So anyway, Charles Cross submitted plans to the Academy of Sciences in Paris for a sound recording and production machine, which he called the Paleophone. Although his are considered to be the first plans for such a device, there's no evidence that his device was ever made and ever became a reality. So Thomas Edison's phonograph still holds the prize for the first ever device to both record and play back audio. But if we go back a little bit further, we now have evidence of an audio recording device before all this, and a 19th century printer and bookseller who became an inventor as well, named Edward Scott de Martinville, is responsible. So, Edward was intrigued by how photography could preserve images and wanted to discover a way to capture and record human speech the same way photography did for images. He also later became interested in linguistics and the relationship between people's names and their character. But anyway, he wanted to create a form of stenography that would not miss anything from a conversation. It makes sense that he was interested in stenography since he worked as a printer and bookseller and he actually wrote a few papers on shorthand note taking. Anyway, so here he is into stenography, note taking and thinking about how to record a conversation in its entirety and he eventually becomes fascinated with the idea of recording audio using mechanical methods. So he set to work trying to make something to record audio. Through his printing job, he got his hands on a physics textbook that had anatomy drawings, and he set to work trying to create a mechanical device with components that actually mimicked the different parts of the human ear. This is how the phonautograph was born. He used an elastic membrane to act like the tympanum in the human ear system. He used levers to mimic the ossicle, and those in turn move a stylus that would then press onto some sort of a surface. He proposed paper, wood, or glass covered in lamp black. So anyway, he refined his design a bit, and on January 26, 1857, he delivered his plans for this design to the French Academy of Sciences. And on March 25th, he got his patent for the design, the phone autograph. The phone autograph was actually pretty crazy cool looking. I'll put a picture up here on the screen somewhere. Unlike Edison's device though, the phone autograph could only record visual images of the sound and couldn't actually play back these recordings. So that's probably why so many people cite Edison's device as being the first audio recording device. Anyway, it used a horn and diaphragm that then vibrated a stiff bristle that would then record an image on lamp black coated hand cranked cylinders. And just for the record guys, lamp black is just black pigment made from soot. So these were literally recordings made with soot. They were soot recordings. So anyway, it wasn't totally useless since they used it for scientific experiments and investigations to try to understand sound waves better. And he even sold a few of them to different science labs of the time. Some scientists of the time used it to study vowel sounds. And actually, Edward Scott de Martinville made a handful of other acoustic devices with an instrument maker named Rudolf Koenig. So those other devices might be an interesting one to look into at some point. But even though this device was fairly successful and helped cause more research into his other tools that he worked on, he never made a profit from this endeavor and continued to work as a bookseller and printer for the rest of his life. Okay, so Edward invented this awesome device that could record audio, but we were unable to play it back until fairly recently. So in 2008, it was reported by the New York Times that scientists at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory had managed to convert the squiggles on paper from 1860 into a digital, playable audio file. These squiggles on paper were called phonautograms, and we've since decoded a bunch of them from the second half of the 1800s. Some of the audio recorded with the device include a man singing Au Claire de la Lune, which is the earliest recording of singing that we have, the opening lines from Aminta in Italian from 1860, which is said to be the earliest recording of intelligible human speech, and a recording of Edward's voice from 1857 that's fairly garbled sounding. 
Okay, so that's basically it. The only other interesting thing that I found is that when they were working on decoding the Au Claire de la Lune recordings, there was no set speed for playback. So when they first decoded it, they thought it was a 10 second recording of a woman or child singing at what they figured was a normal tempo. But they later discovered that there had been a misunderstanding about the reference frequency that accompanied the recording, which meant that they had doubled the playback speed. And it was actually a 20 second recording of a man singing, and they think it was Edward Scott himself singing at a very slow tempo. So if you're interested in hearing and exploring more of these early sounds, firstsounds.org is a great reference that you should check out. I'll put a link in the description for you guys. And I actually got the idea for this episode from chapter 11 of the Genius Dialogues on Audible. So this is totally not a sponsored video, but if you want to learn more, you can check that out. So that's it, a bit of interesting audio history for you guys. I hope you guys liked this video and please let me know what you think in the comments below. For today's question, I wanna know what are some interesting topics from audio history that we should discuss next? I always love suggestions on what to do next here on this channel, so please leave me your answers in the comments below. So thanks guys. As usual, if you like this video, please watch my other videos or check out my Patreon. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday and thanks for watching. Okay, it's really hot out. My balcony plants are dying. Send help. Okay, it's too hot. I gotta get out of here. I'm sorry, guys. I would talk about something, but it's so hot that I can't even think of what to say. And I want to turn these lights off, and I want to sit with an ice pack somewhere. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, thanks for hanging out. You guys are cool, and I'll miss you. Bye.